Alright, welcome back guys, or welcome to your first time here. I'm Vision here with Blind Entertainment, bringing you guys another video. Today I'm going to be giving you guys my review of Oblivion Song, issue number 2. Now if that's something you're interested in, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell icon, that way you don't miss any future videos on or, or reviews of Oblivion Song moving forward. Now let's begin. So, we start this issue off with a scene of this father holding up his daughter to take a picture. And it's revealed that this is happening just as the Oblivion dimension appeared back when it ha occurred I, all those years ago I think it was 10 years ago and I'm gonna say this I think they I, I'm gonna say I'm kind of confused on how they opened up this issue because I like how we get the backstory however I feel like they should have done a better job explaining it I do like how we got the little like kind of blurb at the beginning of what happened in the previous issue but I still feel like we left off in the previous issue with Nathan being watched by the people in the Oblivion. And then we start this issue off here. It just is a little bit confusing for me at first. And I think they should have done a little bit better of a job. Kind of explaining what was going on. And I do like what they got there. Because then you got... Then it's revealed that they're at a, like this museum. Kind of like mo memorial kind of monument place to honor those lost in the Oblivion. And I do like that idea. I like how they have this place set up. And you see, you see people watching videos of people who were, I guess, I'm, I think these are people that were rescued and then they're accounting their stories after the fact. So I do like that. And you got Nate and you got Nathan Cole kind of giving the Crenshaws like a kind of a tour of the place just to kind of, I guess, help them cope and readjust back to the, back to society. I'm going to say the way it was portrayed, I like it. But I think they should have done a little better job explaining some things. Because like I said, you ended issue one with them in the, with Cole and the Oblivion. And then you start here with him giving the Crenshaws a tour. It just, I don't know, I felt a little like something happened. Like, I don't know, like it felt like, I'm not sure, like, did, did this happen before he went into the into the oblivion in the end of last issue or did he return from the oblivion and now he's giving them the tour just i feel like they could have polished it up a little bit and given us a little better explanation as to what's going on because it was just a little bit confusing to me leading up to this point in the story and then we see the crenshaws are kind of in kind of shock and kind of just still trying to adjust and you got Cole, who's trying to just reassure them that everything's okay, that is a normal kind of process, and just kind of, like I said, re trying to re reassimilate them, and then you see them kind of freak out, in a sense, at the sight of something, then it's revealed in the next panel that you, they have this stuffed kind of alien creature that had come over in the Oblivion, and I really like that kind of idea, and they kind of... I, you understand why these people are a little shocked because, like, these are the creatures that they used to see in the Oblivion and, I, and like, we were trying to hide from. So I really like that idea. And I really like the story that how it, this was, like, a creature that first came through and it kind of, the chaos that it brought with it, it killed, I think they said, like, 25,000 people or something like that in the wake of, what, of the Oblivion and it just was, ran, wreaked havoc in... I think it's what Chicago here that the story takes place or I forget exactly where but I really like how I got this kind of idea and story being told here and you get the picture of the cop who was able to take the one shot to kill it and it's revealed that even though he stopped the animal he lost his own life in the battle and that picture is kind of like iconic because it's literally taken minutes before some that guy died so I really like that ideology and how everybody else in the picture even the person that took the picture are all still alive today and this guy's looked at as like a national hero in a sense so i really liked that ideology and i think it was such a great thing to add in just kind of bring in a little more origins to the story again i just feel like what how the story's portrayed right now it was just a little clunky in the beginning but moving up to this point i really like what they added here and just good backstory to the overall beginning of what happened when the oblivion first appeared in the world and then you got the you got the Crenshaws asking him about how he travels to the Oblivion and kind of like the backstory there. So we get some backstory there and he kind of explains it's kind of like these seismic, I guess, tremors or whatever that occurred when this creature came through. And he kind of used technology to, I guess, 
I, I'm not totally sure how the technology works, but it's like he used what they, the kind of like readings he got when that creature first appeared to kind of like stimulate some kind of portal to open up to get to the oblivion. I guess it works somehow similar to that. And you see like some uh, display case of like peop- the outfits that they wear and stuff like that. And he just kind of goes into the story about how like he kind of created the technology to go into the oblivion. And I don't totally understand how he goes to the oblivion. I, I it's still kind of clunky for me. I guess he just like I said, you reverse engineered some kind of technology to open up the a portal or something like that. But I do like how they give us that kind of backstory there and give us some information and insight into the first time or the origins of how he tra- began traveling to the oblivion in a sense. So we then got Nathan who takes the Crenshaws up to the monument area where the wall is and we get some we get some brief backstories of monument wall and I really like that kind of backstory about how it was built where the dimension first appeared and when it did it kind of the allergy and stuff there that was that like kind of plant life that was there kind of died off quick and just left this vast desert and they created the wall as one a way to keep people out of that area and two just remember to keep these people who were lost their memory alive and we Nathan mentions that he doesn't totally like it because it feels like they're giving up on these people that are still lost and as we know he's got his brother Ed there so he doesn't want to give up on them and he on the people and he doesn't like this idea of the wall which is kind of why he goes and scratches off the names whenever he rescues someone and then you got the Crenshaws who kind of bring up the fact that there are other people still there and they name drop Ed, who is the leader of their people who are still living there, but they don't want to be found. And you got you got Cole, who bring, who quickly jumps on the name Ed and quickly qu- begins questioning more about this Ed person and asking a couple more questions about what's going on in the Oblivion kind of area. So then we got Nathan going to his girlfriend to try to have her convince her boss to refund his adventures into the oblivion and I do like these scenes between the two of them because she's trying to you know tell him that her boss won't listen he's trying to convince her that maybe he will since they know that there are people out there but then again they don't want to be found so there's a low rate that they'll actually find people so she's trying to talk him out of it but yet he, she knows in the end that he's still gonna go and just kind of gives in at that point I'm gonna say again these scenes as much as I like them and these are good scenes to have, it establishes his relationship with his girlfriend. I just feel like we should have had another panel or two because it feels like it, it felt like we were in one story where they were at the memorial area and then the next scene we're here. I just feel like we need, could have used a couple extra panels to explain that we're moving scenes. I get it. We're, we don't need to be spoon fed, but it just was a kind of felt like the story was a lot clunky again here and just kind of flowed in a weird way but I did like the story they gave us here and I think it was an important story that they needed to tell and just kind of give it to us I'm glad it didn't last for a couple pages there's only these a uh, couple panels that I think it's only two pages so I really did enjoy that and I think it's a good interesting story that'll be brought back up probably later on in stories to come moving forward in the in this story and then we move forward and we see Bridget having a dinner with her, I guess, ex-boyfriend. And it's revealed here that Duncan, who was rescued a few months earlier from the Oblivion and is a part of Cole's team, was is her husband. And I guess during the time period when he was missing, she established this relationship with this guy and she's kind of trying to break it off at this point. I'm interested to see where this goes. I hope they don't like have like a big plot line in the story I hope it's just kind of like a background story because I like how this only took up one page and only a few panels I'm I hope they don't like have this become like a big storyline later on and it's like kind of overtaking the original story with Cole I hope they just kind of keep it in the background and just comment back and forth to it here and there I don't think it's going to be a major player but I'm very interested to see where it goes and how it affects the team as a whole moving forward if if Duncan ever finds out later on. We then move on and see Cole meeting up with an ex-teammate of his and he's trying to recruit him back into his team. However, this guy's moved on and has a family. Doesn't want to put them and himself in danger anymore going over into the oblivion, which is I understand and I really like how to add that kind of story in there. And then you got 
Bridget and Duncan and Duncan's questioning why she was out so late with his with her sister, which she had told him he she was doing, but when real, reality she was meeting up with her ex boyfriend. And I'm interested to see what they do with this kind of relationship. I wonder if their fallout relationship leads this former member to join back up with Cole. I'm interested to see what they do with the, with the relationship stuff. I hope it's not like it comes to the forefront and takes up the entirety of the story. But I'm interested to see what they do. But I think it's definitely something that could be interesting as long as it's not like takes up the entirety of the story moving forward. We then go to when Cole's India living again. I think this is where we left off last issue i'm not entirely sure again the whole flow of the issue kind of felt off but we get him back in the oblivion and he's yelling out is anybody there uh, pretty much because he knows there's other people there doodle but the crenshaws told him and he ends up getting attacked by one of the monsters there and ends up in this kind of scuffle and he falls to the ground and then he looks up and at the very end of the issue we see him look up and there's this person standing over him with a gun and telling him not to move and i like the ending to this the only thing i have an issue with the ending to this issue is the whole don't move and the gun at his face i wonder if he if kirkman's playing homage to the walking dead because the walking dead ended in in a similar way due to the first appearance of alpha i wonder if he's playing homage to something like that That'd be fine, but I just feel like I wish they'd ended it somewhere different. I I just feel like we've seen this all stuff before. It's just kind of a repeat of old stuff. I know it's the same person, but still, come come up with something original in my opinion. We didn't need to have the same scene play out again and just in a different story. But then, one thing I found interesting that this book did is they had like a post scene like after the notes from the editor and offer and stuff like that. And you see... Cole looking at this person saying, please don't hurt me. I'm not going to hurt you and let me just talk. And then the person says back to him, y- you know, you're human. And he says, what else would I be? And it ends there. So I kind of did like the whole post kind of, I don't know if we'd call it a post credit scene or what it, whatever you call it. But I'm interested to see what, if they continue that moving forward. It's very interesting and something new in a comic I haven't seen before. So I'm interested to see where to take that moving forward. Oh, no, I think this is a solid second issue to oblivion song i'm interested to see where they take it moving forward and what they do with the story overall with these characters and what's going on with in the oblivion just very excited definitely something i think if you're not reading you should definitely check out i don't think it's at at least for me just two issues in i don't think it's great or amazing i just think it's average interesting and just something i think if you haven't checked it out yet definitely check it out it's definitely something i think you'll be interested in if you're a fan of kirkman and post-apocalyptic kind of stories so yeah guys that's my review of oblivion song issue number two if you like this video give it a big thumbs up and share and don't forget to subscribe down below and hit the bell icon that we don't miss any future reviews on oblivion song moving forward this has been vision here of blind entertainment and i will see you next time